from Lubbock, Texas. Welcome to Fox College Football, sponsored by the all-new, totally remixed Volkswagen Jetta. Jones AT&T Stadium, Texas Tech hosting Houston on a gorgeous afternoon for football. Glad you're with us. Joe Davis, Brady Quinn, Bruce Feldman, and Dean Blandino. We've got a couple of high-powered offenses, but we also have one of the top defensive players in the country, and Houston's Ed Oliver. A rare combination of size, speed, and athleticism, but what makes him so impressive is his motor. He goes 100% all four quarters throughout the game. It's a rarity at his position. He's been phenomenal throughout the course of his career. He's a game record, and he forces you to have to account for him on every single play. Part of this Houston squad off to a 2-0 start. They've won eight of their last nine against Power 5 opponents. The lone loss in that span came against Texas Tech last year. Red Raiders, meanwhile, three losing seasons over the last four years, trying to springboard into Big 12 play with back-to-back -back wins. Houston won the toss, deferred to the second half. Kaden Novikov sends it away, and off we go from Lubbock. That is a touchback. Coming off the 77-point performance, here comes his Texas Tech offense with a true freshman at a grapevine Texas, Alan Bowman, who took over for McLean Carter week one, and then in his first start last week, and I know it was Lamar, but 22 of 25. He was sensational, especially for a true freshman. And even going back to week one, when he came in from McLean Carter, I thought he showed a lot of poise for someone who probably didn't get a lot of reps to prepare for that game. Biggest key for him today and what head coach Cliff Kingsbury talks about, just run the system. Don't force it. Don't, don't worry about trying to force things and try to cause any sort of turnovers. That's the biggest thing he's done. He's taking care of the football. We'll open the day from the 25-yard line with a first down and 10. Start with a quick throw to Tejon Henry. The freshman has a short game. You know, these teams met up last year, and Ed Oliver had an okay game, but it wasn't necessarily a game-wrecking performance. One tackle for loss, and really that came from a miscommunication up front on Texas Tech's offensive line. They feel pretty good about their game plan, and sometimes keeping them soloed up, not having to give help. On second down, Bowman to throw again. Into the flats he goes. That's Antoine Wesley for a Texas Tech first down. Now they had four receivers depart to the NFL. Wesley, one of the guys that stepped up since. They've got a lot of size on the outside. Wesley, six foot five. TJ Vassar, six, six foot six. Bowman's going to have some opportunities to throw it up to him. From the 41, on first down, first run play to Demarcus Felton. Something that Texas Tech is doing more of this year, running the football. And it's something Cliff Kingsbury wanted to put an emphasis on coming into this year. And that's why he brought in offensive coordinator Kevin Johns. He's got a background coaching in the Big Ten, Indiana, Northwestern. I'm going to try to incorporate more of his running game with a tight end in. Play action on second down. Sidearms a throw to the sideline, and J.D. and High breaks free. Inside the 20, inside the 10, first and goal. Texas Tech on a 56-yard completion. So far, Ed Oliver has not done anything to impact this game, but you see why. They're trying to some misdirection and to get Bowman to the outside of the pocket. Ball thrown a little bit behind. High makes a nice play by coming back to the football and able to get some of that yak. Six-year senior has been one of Bowman's favorite targets in his game and a half as the quarterback. They flip it to the freshman. Tejon Henry reaches for the goal line, but they spot him short. And it's third and goal. Let's take a look and see if he got the ball across the plane. Tremendous effort by Henry, but give some credit to Garrett Davis. Ooh. I think he got it, partner. I think he got it as well. And remember, if his forearm touches down, different story. Hand okay in that case as he extends the football across the goal line. View. The ball broke the plane of the goal line prior to the runner being down, which is a touchdown. Please reset the game clock to 12.58. 12 12 Oh, kind of what we expected we'd see today. Six plays, 75 yards in two minutes and 20 seconds. Vintage Texas Tech offensive football. I mean, these two teams really have both been some of the more productive offenses in college football over the past decade. Played in the Hatfield. And 
That's the extra point. Texas Tech building off of the momentum that they built last week. Houston's offense takes the ball for the first time when you come back. Last year wasn't the first time these two head coaches squared off. Played against each other back when Cliff Kingsbury was quarterback at Texas Tech. Major Applewhite quarterback at Texas. Coached against each other before as well when Applewhite was a co-coordinator at Texas. And Kingsbury was in his first year as the head coach here. Jeremy Singleton, Marquez Stevenson back to return this kick. It is a good one. And Houston will start at the 25 yard line. Back to back 45 point games. And this man right here, De'Eric King, 10 total touchdowns leading the charge. The American Athletic Conference Offensive Player of the Week last week, accounting for six touchdowns versus Arizona. One of the more productive players, reminiscent of Greg Ward, a former Houston quarterback. I think he's not quite as elusive, but he's a bigger, stronger runner with the football and still has the ability in the passing game to hurt you. Guy that spent most of last year at receiver, started at quarterback for the final five games, really took off then. Undisputed starter coming into this year. From the 25 yard line, he starts with a quick throw to the outside. That's Courtney Lark for a gain of four. It's wide open Houston offense. With a new coordinator this year in Kendall Bryles, bringing his system over from FAU, where they were top 10 in the country last year. So that a backdoor option play. Eli Howard with the tackle, making it third down. And the sophomore out of San Angelo, Texas, has really come on, but you can see early on the pace of this offense. That's exactly what Kendall Bryles brings to Houston. Up tempo, simplifies what the defense can do. Third and five, he scans the field, finds an opening, hitting the crosser who breaks into open space. That's a first down to the tight end, Romello Brooker, on a gain of 22. And Brooker was completely uncovered. That's what happens when you go at such a fast speed. It hurts the defense trying to get a line. Play action on first down. King pivots out the back door and throws it to the sideline, where it is caught by Corbin for a gain of eight. Go back and see if he got the ball before going out of bounds. Indeed, everything looks in, gains possession. First down as Desmond Smith brings down Marquez Stevenson. Talking to defensive coordinator David Gibbs, he said he wants to force the Eric King to beat him throwing short and intermediate routes. No big plays, no quarterback runs. From the 37 yard line play action King looking over the top and settling underneath where Lark breaks a tackle. Courtney Lark body slammed down after 23 yards by Justice Parker first down in 10. And this is the thing that plagued them last week and really in week one excuse me two weeks ago for the Texas, Texas Tech defense missed tackles in open field allowing bigger plays. All kinds of time but he throws high over Lark. The coverage from Desmond Smith, second and ten. Rare opportunity for both teams to sub once there's an incomplete pass. It's part of the field. You always have to be aware for the quarterback running game as we watch Courtney Lark go out, a little banged up. Here's King looking short side into the end zone. It is caught for the touchdown by Raylan Singleton. The Utah transfer. His first reception at Houston is a touchdown in the opening drive. And Singleton has all that size, but it was more about the length of being able to extend to get his arms underneath the football. And the question's going to be, does he have possession as he hits the ground? He does. Talking to the Houston coaching staff, they said, it sounds like you guys are excited to see what he can do. He goes, so are we. Yeah. Extra point from Dalton Witherspoon ties the game up. Well, a couple of touchdown drives lasting less than two minutes. For Houston, it's the 10th one already this season that goes under two minutes, and it's 7 7 in Lubbock. Less than four minutes in. Your seatbelt working? That's out of the back of the end zone. And we go down to Bruce Feldman. Guys, when we saw this. This bobblehead doll, this great ingenious marketing campaign by Houston to promote Ed Oliver. 
It's for early about the Heisman, but when I talked to Ed Oliver yesterday, he said, you know who would get my vote if I had a vote? It'd be De'Eric King. He has really flourished in this offense, as we saw in the first drive. And as Brady said, there's a lot of comparisons to Greg Ward Jr. But when I talked to Major Applewhite, he said, as fast and elusive as Greg Ward was, this kid is probably even faster, has a stronger arm, reads coverages better, and is more accurate. He also cautioned, you know what? We've only had two games, so I can't wait to see what he's doing, doing here against Texas Tech tonight. And let him do a quick talk. Touchdown drive to open the day. Now, first and 20. Bowman heaving wide over the head of Vasher. Second down and 10. A little bit different look to this offense this season. The ground game, a big focus. You know, two years ago, they were 123rd in the country. A little bit better last year, but for two weeks this year, way better. Yeah, I think because you're playing in the Big 12, you get so many three-man fronts and you get light boxes, meaning not enough bodies to stop the run. It's more really geared to stop the pass. And that's where Cliff Kingsbury is trying to be ahead of the curve and bringing in someone who's got experience doing that. And seven rushing touchdowns last week in that 77-0 win. Back to the ground here on second and long. Nowhere to go for Felton, who is tackled by the freshman Logan Hall. Carter. This is the area where when you're a true freshman like Alan Bowman just because it's third and forever it doesn't need, mean you need to force something if you have to check it down get some yards after the catch and add on yards to the punt. So Cliff Kingsbury has been most pleased with with Bowman through the first two games is and avoiding those negative plays and the turnovers based in a three man rush he's got a clean pocket zips one incomplete. A tight coverage on Zach Austin from Emeki Ekbule. <laughs> Texas Tech punting it away with a line drive from Panizolo. And downed at the 15 yard line. And Houston has it first down at its own 16. First carry for the Baylor transfer Terrence Williams who's got a gain of three and it'll be second down and seven part of a running back rotation for the Cougars of course Williams very familiar with the offense played in it under Kendall Bryles at Baylor King over the middle and a nice adjustment for the catch by Corbin Keith Corbin who had his first career touchdown last week has a gain of 23 here. Junior out of Beaumont, Texas. They say he's the most reliable, does some of the dirty work. The guy going across the middle a lot of times. And the whistle came after the snap, but they will blow it dead. The ball was not ready for play. Will we play first down? I'm not surprised, are you? No, they're always pushing the envelope. Really, both these teams, when they go on to go up tempo, kind of nullifies what a defense can do. Obviously, gets those big boys up front tired, and the defense is scrambling just to try to get lined up. Major Appleway bringing on Kendall Bryles as the OC this year, and all positive signs so far. Back to back 45 point outputs against Rice and then Arizona. First down and 10. King pumps short. He'll go down the sideline. Juan Stevenson, who juggles and can't pull it in. Roderick Washington with the pressure on King. Second and 10. And that's how Kendall Bryles likes to call these games. They like to throw those outside screens with the wide receivers. And then they really go for the knockout punch. And they try to pump the screen and then throw up field. In that case, targeting Marquez Stevenson. He's got already three receptions over 50 yards this season. He is a big time talent. It's like 30 yards per touch for him. Leads the country. Second down and 10. King has Stevenson open. And there is the big play machine. Marquez Stevenson with another. This one from 57 yards. And Houston takes its first lead of the day. Speaking of, when you've got that sort of separation, it's easy. You run crossing routes to try to run away from the defense and find the soft spots in the zone coverage. Just a matter of time, right? He does this every game. 
Dalton Witherspoon's extra point makes it 14 7 Houston. So Stevenson with yet another big play to cap off an 84 yard drive that goes just a minute six. Back here in Lubbock. 57 yard touchdown strike from Deere King to Marquez Stevenson at Houston with its first lead of the day. Cougars have won eight of their last nine against Power Five teams. The lone loss in that span came against Texas Tech last year in Houston. Here to Novikov will kick it. And a touchback as we look back at that touchdown. And there's Marquez Stevenson, and he's just really going to run a little crossing route and find the soft spot in the zone coverage. And then it's all De'Ara King after that, being able to identify it and throwing him a ball that's out in front that allows him to catch it and utilize that speed and run away from the defense. One of the special parts of this offense so far this year for Houston is because of De'Ara King's ability to run the football, it's simplified what defenses can really do against them, and it's allowed for one-on-one -on -one coverage at time on Stevenson. He's taken advantage of it. Guy that missed all of last year with a torn ACL, much of the year before with a broken collarbone, but has come back in a big way. Back down to Bruce. Joe, as dominant as Ed Oliver's been in his first two years at Houston, he told me he has worked so hard to reevaluate everything he did, whether it's footwork, or his hands, hand-eye coordination, everything. We can talk about the motor and all the other great things he does, but it's really his demeanor and his attitude, how he approaches this, as you see here in this video. He's a remarkable athlete. He came in at 300 pounds as a freshman. Last year, played at 265. Now he's about 281, he said. And he goes, you know what? I feel much leaner. I feel much more explosive. I'm ready to go for four quarters. And he, of course, is headed to the draft next year. He's already announced it. John Henry getting the bulk of the carries stopped at the line of scrimmage Oliver was there first and his comparison Aaron Donald for me That's exactly who I see from a size standpoint his impact in games his disruptiveness He's got that sort of you know high-end ability Bowman whips one to the outside for Wesley who got by Nick Watkins made another man miss and puts on the afterburners Antoine Wesley does it himself Touchdown, Texas Tech from 58 yards. It's just a simple out route. Wesley catches it, turns around. Once he's able to get upfield, makes a couple men miss, that's it. And that's the sort of big play ability that all these Texas Tech wide receivers have. It's so vital, so key to do the simplest thing for defenses. Just tackle. It's going to be the biggest key for both teams moving forward in this game. For Antoine Wesley, Brady, that's back-to-back -back weeks. He's taken a short catch and turned it into a long touchdown. We're tied at 14. Had hip surgery in the spring, too, so what a recovery for him. Spot duty his first two years. He's already more than doubled his career totals. We're tied again in Lubbock. It's going to be a fun afternoon. He's going to be jacked by the end of the day, I have a feeling. <laughs> Battery's not gonna be able to do any more push-ups. I think the other impressive thing about that last play was you know, short throw for Bowman, but it had to be on time, it had to be the right spot to allow Wesley to then turn around and get upfield. Now really for both these teams, there were big questions coming in at receiver. Houston graduated 75% of its receiving yards from last year. Texas Tech sent their top four guys to the NFL. They're both really encouraged with what they've had over the first few weeks of this season. Run play on first down and nothing doing as Patrick Carr gets a yard. But you go back to last year and really up, up until this point, besides Miami, Texas Tech has been right up there with, with the best at taking the football away. And, and I think when you, when you look at these high-powered offenses, it's all about getting additional possessions. King steps up, heaving one into one-on-one, -on -one, down the field, perfect throw. Seventy nine yards with a perfect strike from De'Ara King and Houston jumps back in front. You better buckle up. This is what we're going to see all day long. And this is the shot by De'Ara King throwing it up. It's got enough air trajectory to allow Stevenson to run underneath it. And Stevenson versus Douglas Coleman is really the third quarterback in for Texas Tech. Just no match.
So Stevenson, the last two touchdowns, a 57 yarder, and now this 78 yarder. And the Cougs waste no time, jumping right back in front. Took him 37 seconds. This guy's emerging into a star, the sophomore from Shreveport, back in a moment. 21-14, Houston in front. These big plays, this is what Kendall Bryles' offenses typically do. And they're going to identify a weakness and try to exploit that all game long. Clearly, they like the matchup versus Douglas Coleman of Texas Tech. Opportunity here for Daquan Bowman. He's had a good start to this season in the return game. He's got room to take this one near the 30. And that's where Texas Tech will start. Closing seconds of this first quarter. First and 20 for Texas Tech. Bowman swings it out. Tejon Henry, they've got him bottled up. They'll get a few. A bump that abounds by Gleason Sprewell. That brings this first quarter to a close. For those of you watching us on Fox Business Network, tune to Fox to continue watching this shootout from Lubbock, 21-14 after a quarter. Here at Lubbock, new left tackle in the game, Dawson Deaton, Madison Akamano leaving. They've also got Jacob Hines in there at left guard. Second down, 16 to open this second quarter. Alan Bowman, true freshman quarterback, on time. And again, on target to Antoine Wesley, who cuts it back to the inside for a first down. 23 yards, and what a start to this game for Wesley. If you wonder why it was clean protection, look how many guys are signing that all over. He hit all three guys on him. It's a clean pocket for Bowman. That's an easy pitch and catch. Well, and there was a bit of, uh, you know, I guess, a argument or debate over what color jerseys each team That's was right. going to wear before the game. Typically, the home team wears the darker colors, but Texas Tech wanted to wear it to support the cotton industry. That was part of the story, but also because if it was hot, a little bit cooler then for the home team. Houston wouldn't budge on that. Keyshawn Carter on the sweet play. Out to midfield, and we go down to Bruce. Guys, just some updates here. Texas Tech really banged up on the O-line. Travis Bruffy, their most experienced lineman, struggling with the ankle. He's out, and Madison Akamano, he retaped the ankle. He's trying to go, but right now he's been he's been struggling on the sideline. All right, Bruce, they protect well here, and what a dime from Allen Bowman. T.J. Vasher to the 20. 31 yards with a perfect strike. All you got to do is throw it up. TJ Vasher is six foot six. He can really high point the football. He's got good feet and balance on the sidelines to stay in bounds and make the big play. You're right about the size out there with Vasher at six six, Wesley at six five. About being like a basketball team. I mean, he's your center. You got Wesley on the other side as your power forward. You got Bowman as the point guard. 13 for 19 so far. They run inside, which we've only seen a few times, and this is why. There's just not a whole lot in there. It's Tejon Henry gets stopped by Peyton Turner and Gerard Carter. Godfrey in there as well. And there's actually Sir Roderick Thompson on the carry. Four receivers into the near side of the field on second down. Bowman over the middle. Vasher got bumped and it was almost caught off of the deflection by High. There is a flag, and this is going to be first down. I think Nick Watkins got there just a little bit too early for Houston. Pass interference. Defense number 20. Ball replaced at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. The grad transfer from Notre Dame brings some experience to this team, but right there, a little bit too much contact before the ball arrived. Don't be surprised if Texas Tech doesn't try to go back to that matchup. Bowman back to throw. Into the end zone for a touchdown to T.J. Vasher. Took advantage of that matchup one more time. And here's the thing. Looks how he looks off the defense to the left, and he knows where he wants to go. He's peeking to that backside, and he's patient enough to wait 
for Vasher to get to the second window. It's a big time play by an inexperienced quarterback. Here in Vasher, his first touchdown of the season with the extra point from Clayton Hatfield. This game is again tied. Bowman already 265 through the air on 14 of 21. Plenty more to come from Lubbock. Here in Lubbock, this game's tied at 21. Houston and Texas Tech. Entertaining ball game going on. That's over the head of Marquez Stevenson. Tied at 21. Houston back on offense. Patrick Carr initially contacted in the backfield by Dakota Allen. And it didn't get a whole lot. Second down. If there was one decisive advantage in this matchup, I would say it's the Texas Tech defensive front versus the Houston offensive line. Second and eight, they fake the run. King can run himself really well. He's got a first down near the 40. But they can't let that happen. They've got to be able to keep De'Ara King contained. He's just being a magician right there. Look, looks the throw, nothing's there. And just has that natural sense and feel for where the open space is. Car to the left side. Good surge that time from the offensive line. Thomas Leggett up to get him after a gain of four or five. As fast moving of an offense as you'll find in the country. Second down and five from the 45 with a fake to Carr. Into the flats they go. And Allen is all over Brooker. Dakota Allen, all Big 12 a year ago, and has returned to Texas Tech after spending 2016 to the junior college level. We'll dive into that story as the day rolls on, but a huge season in his return and a captain for the second year in a row. Keep an eye on Marquez Stevenson in the slot. He's been the go-to guy for Houston. Pressure coming. King in trouble. Able to escape momentarily, but he gets just four. Dragged down from behind by Tony Jones. And it's fourth down. They bring the corner pressure off the edge along with Tony Jones, and it eventually ends up getting to De'Ara King. That's the biggest thing. They're trying to keep him in the, in the pocket, but if they can, they'd like to flush him out to one side where they have a defender wrapping around ready for him. Dane Roy's punt is a line drive. Daquan Bowman signaling for a fair catch and losing the football. Houston's on it. Inside the 20 with the first turnover of the afternoon. Coming on special teams. And it looks like Josh Burrell was the lucky Houston Cougar to jump on the football. We talked about it. There's a swirling wind, and a lot of times that ends up impacting the way that ball is coming down. He's number 28. Question is, big time opportunity for Houston. They come right back and take a shot. With the first down from the Texas Tech 18 yard line. They fake and zip it to the seam at Stevenson or make that Keith Corbin. Keith Corbin for the touchdown and Houston back in front, wasting no time taking advantage of the takeaway. We talked about it. Change of possession, take a shot. And Corbin totally redeems himself coming back and catching a touchdown pass after the false start earlier in that drive. Witherspoon's extra point, and it's 28-21. Houston, 18-yard touchdown strike. De'Ara King to Keith Corbin. One play after Bowman put it on the ground on the punt midway through the second quarter. The muffed punt from Daquan Bowman Proves critical quickly as Keith Corbin catches a touchdown in the next play. Look at these numbers already. 268 for King midway through the second quarter. Talk about a quarterback friendly offense. That's what you come here to Houston or Texas Tech to do, man. You're going to throw up that football. Short kick here, it's Bowman having an adventure again. 
Uh oh, struggling with it, going down. A frustrating few moments for Bowman. First play of this drive as Bowman dropping back to throw, and on the wheel, he's got Henry out of the backfield. Hey, John Henry out of Houston, Lamar High School with a nice pickup on first down. What a design, though. You know, you motion Henry across the formation, you fake to him, and then you end up targeting out of the backfield. So creative. It's one of the things you got to appreciate about Cliff Kingsbury. We got their own package of plays for Henry. He motions out here, making it four receivers to the near side. Bowman scanning the field. It's Henry again in open space. It's six or seven. A tackle from Gleason Sprewell. Where's that Oliver? I don't know if he's getting worn down a little bit or just want to give credit to the Texas Tech offensive line, but early in this game had a bigger impact. Right now, not seeing him show up as much. Alan Bowman doing his best to get rid of the ball quickly to help that cause. Here they put it on the ground and a short game with a stop from Derek Parrish. Henry with a gain of two, it's third and short. And credit Deaton and Hines. Those guys have come in for two starters and done a pretty darn good job. Not allowing Ed Oliver and the rest of Houston defensive front to ruin the game. Third down and two. On the speed out, Seth Collins can't hang on. He got blasted by Alexander Myers to make it fourth down. Well, before the play, Bowman signaled out. He wanted to try to get it to Carter on a little quick out. Myers read it the entire way. You could see his eyes were inside. He knew exactly what Texas Tech was trying to do. Just a bone crushing hit, legal. Good time play. Offense staying out there on fourth and two. They've only converted so far this year, Texas Tech, on fourth down by running the football. 0 for 3 so far this year. Empty set on fourth down and two. Bowman back to throw. Underneath with Vasher converting into Houston territory. On fourth and two, they get 18. Vasher really turning into the go-to guy right now. Critical situation. Able to get separation as long, long arms out in front. Good catch and run. Henry, big hold on first down. Inside the 25 on a gain of 11. For another Red Raider, first down. First down again from the 24. They fake to Henry, throw to J.D. and high. He's close to another Texas Tech first down, and they've got it rolling right now. So tough to stop when you get playing at this sort of pace, and you're just dinking and dunking and taking advantage of the soft spots and the zone coverage. First down from the 14. They run it to the short side of the field. Sir Roderick Thompson toppled by Roman Brown. Roman Brown and Austin Robinson, those guys are so active on the inside because of the defensive front, in particular at Oliver. They're really free runners to the football. That's Vasher in motion. Motion's back out. Bowman looking left side. Floating for Wesley in the touchdown. Second of the game for Antoine Wesley. Perfect, perfect. Beautifully thrown ball, but look at the split. See how close he is to the hash? This leaves all the additional room for Bowman to throw the football, and really it's the route. Wesley gets the defender to the inside, then back to the outside. It's Isaiah Johnson, the cornerback, formerly a wide receiver. He bites on the old sluggo, that's what they call it, a little slant and go. And as good as dear King has been, throwing for the 268 yards and four touchdowns, Bowman even better, 334 and three touchdowns. We're locked at 28. We are tied. Ladies and gentlemen, another touchdown for Texas Tech. Wesley catching Bowman's third touchdown pass of the day. 
And, you know, Bowman is in the starting lineup with McLean Carter getting injured week one. They say they hope that they can get Carter back next week. With a Patrick Carr run. First time they've been able to break through on the ground. Colorado transfer with a first down. Well, typically you talk about like a two-minute offense. Both these teams move so fast. It's just a normal operation. First down run for Carr. For Dakota Allen, though. Over 200 tackles now in his career. <laughs> Terry Mark, his first catch, third and short. Kings fans can move to number 17, Terry Mark. Stop by number three, Douglas Coleman. On third and two, it's blown up. Preston Gordon, the rice transfer. And that's where, where you're moving this fast. Sometimes it ends up playing at a disadvantage. I'm going to take a time out to think about this one. Too long for a field goal. Got to think about going for it if you're Houston, the way this game's gone back and forth. We saw how aggressive Cliff Kingsbury was going for fourth down on their last drive. Now they move King back into the shotgun. Bryson Smith. He comes in motion. Throw the other way. Corbin drops it and a turnover on down. So they use him as a decoy. They motion him away to loosen up the defender inside. That's John Bonney. And it's not a well thrown football, but it's good enough where Keith Corbin's got to make that catch. So a minute 53, an eternity for Texas Tech. And out comes Alan Bowman, 21 of 29 for 334. Not even to halftime. All day to throw. Floated up top, and why not? Antoine Wesley climbs the ladder for a gain of 17. What a catch. I mean, you got to love the fact that you can just throw this ball up, and these guys are going to go up and high point it and come down with the football. What a luxury to have. From the 40 now. They get it to him in space this time, but not a whole lot of it. That play blown up. Austin Robinson with a tackle. It's second down with a minute and a half. Wesley's seven catches in this first half now. Bowman steps up and has another completion. This one, J.D. and High for a first down. High and Bowman have such a good rapport with one another. High, obviously, a sixth-year senior. Threw with him a lot during the course of the summer. The relationship is showing itself here today. First and ten. Blitz is picked up. Wesley again. A lot of room. Another first down. Leaping his way inside the 15 with a minute left. Both Wesley and Vasher are strong with the football. So look at those taller, long-legged guys. You'll let him stretch the field vertically, but Texas Tech will give the ball to him quickly and let him run with it. A nice stiff arm. Fake it to Zach Austin. It's Bowman to keep it straight ahead. And brought down. And at this point, not necessarily a bad idea to think about still running the football. You have a timeout left. You don't want to leave Houston with anything left after this possession. Anything. <laughs> On either side. Well, they've always got the luxury to throw it to the outside. You know, Vasher and Wesley are both going to be singled up at one-on-one -on -one at some point. Okay, Wesley to the near side, Vasher to the top, outside receivers, out of an empty set. Bowman steps up, fielding the pressure, throwing for the corner and over Wesley. A flag flies in. Wesley against Isaiah Johnson. He's already beaten him for a touchdown today. Here comes the call from Adam Savoie. I don't know if that was catchable. It's pass interference, defense number 14. Foul occurred in the end zone. By rule, the ball is placed at the two-yard line. Automatic first down. You know, it might be the grab at the top. Here's the matchup. Wesley working on Johnson. And he's going to run that back end line. High back five, they call it, where you throw it up to him. But see how he's tugging on the jersey? 
Right there is where the call was made. I don't necessarily know the ball is catchable, but it doesn't matter. First down and goal from the two yard line. They boot him out the right side and flip it into the flats. Cut down at the one. Connor Killian, seldom used tight end with 12 seconds, and they'll use their timeout. We'll take it with them back in 30 seconds for the end of this entertaining first half. It's one on one press man to man coverage. You got to love one of those matchups if you're Alan Bowman. Vasher to the top, Wesley to his left side. He's looking Wesley's direction. He adjusts, incomplete. Coverage that time from Nick Watkins, seven seconds, third and goal. That's good coverage by the graduate senior. You know, Wesley didn't really high point the football. He let it get down into his body, and that's where Nick Watkins has get a hand in on it. I think it's seven seconds, plenty of time. You should be able to get a throw off here to one of your receivers again on the outside. Snap a string of 10 consecutive Alan Bowman completions. Third down and goal in the closing seconds of this first half. Over the middle for a touchdown to Vassar. His second of the half. And they beat the buzzer, taking the lead here in the second quarter. For such a young player, Alan Bowman does a tremendous job looking the defense off with his eyes. Look at him looking left again, and he's really moving the defense because he knows he wants to come back to Vasher, and it opens up a window in and behind. So he sneaks right behind Deontay Anderson. It's a big time pitch and catch. I mean, this is something, Brady. 27 of 36 for 380 yards and four touchdowns. And still 30 minutes to play. We get you out to Rob Stone in Los Angeles, the State Farm Halftime Show. 35 28. After a half, we still got 30 minutes to go in this game. Joe Davis with Brady Quinn. I mean, I'm looking at the offensive numbers 763 yards combined. There have been nine touchdowns. We're only halfway through. This happens every time we come to Lubbock. I mean, this is what way. you come to expect high offensive production, but really solid quarterback play. I think you look at both teams. Let's start with Texas Tech and Alan Bowman. Hasn't turned the football over, been extremely efficient, and has utilized the, the big bodied wide receivers on the outside. Wesley, as well as Vasher to make multiple connections. And he's really gotten into a rhythm for a guy who didn't start off the season as the starter. And then you look at De'Ara King for Houston. Hasn't turned the football over either. I think he's utilized some of the matchups they've had on the back end. And overall, high offensive production from both teams. We thought maybe Ed Oliver would be a game wrecker versus Texas Tech, but I haven't noticed him that much in the first half. And it will be Houston to get the ball to open the second half. At the 25 yard line. So here comes De'Eric King, 16 of 25 for 287 yards and four touchdowns. It's amazing he could put up numbers like that and still be 100 yards behind the other guy. <laughs> I think we're in for a wild second half, though. I don't, I don't see either of these offenses slowing down. Obviously, conditioning is going to be the biggest factor moving forward for both defenses and whether or not they they have the, the depth to substitute that's something defensive coordinator David Gibbs talked about Texas Tech feels like they have more depth than ever before to substitute and deal with some of these up-tempo offenses second half begins with play action and King zipping one for a first down take a look at our Geico first half stats more than 700 yards of offense and you can add a few more on that with that first play of the half. From the 42. Here comes a trick play. Bryson Smith, who is a high school quarterback, wanted to throw it but won't have a chance as Vontae Dorsey comes into the backfield and swallows him up. Wasn't fooled at all. I think anytime the ball starts going the way of Bryson Smith, this Texas Tech defense is going to be able to key in on it. A bit of misdirection. Trying to get the ball to Marquez Stevenson. Maybe as a decoy. Lost 13 yards there. Second down, 23. Oh, 
That's interesting. Typically, you don't see a team go to the line of scrimmage and then substitute for making it look like they were going to run a play. It's interesting seeing the play clock wind inside of five of these guys. Here's Stevenson reversing field. Marquez Stevenson throws it downfield with the improvisation, getting a first down. Keith Corbin, 30 yards. What in the world was that? Well, my question was not alignment downfield. To look at the misdirection by Marquez Stevenson. High snap pulled down. Here comes King straight ahead with a seam and a good first down game close to another. Look at the first half. The drives where Marquez Stevenson's touched the football. Three touchdowns on those six drives. The ones where he hasn't, only one touchdown and four. Making it a point to get it to him early here. That's over the head of the tight end, Brooker. Third one. Kendall Bryles upset. The officials are holding things up. Terrence Williams, nice cut into open space. Terrence Williams, touchdown Houston. 31 yards on just his second carry of the day. And the Baylor transfer has his first touchdown in a Houston uniform. It's all about keeping contain. And you're going to see in the right side of your screen, it's Vontae Dorsey. He doesn't, he wasn't able to hold the edge. Number 15 right there, he's just too wide. He's got to be able to clamp down on Terrence Williams. Can't allow him to get through that scene. And another drive less than two minutes. It goes 75 yards in a minute 57, and we're tied again. This is Terrence Williams at his best week of practice this week. Caps it off with a touchdown. Tied again. Play. Aquan Bowman bringing it out of the end zone, stumbling as he crosses the 10. So Texas Tech ready for its first drive of this second half. Adam Bowman just short of 400 yards passing. Most prolific half of the season across college football. Quickly into the flats for the sixth year senior, Zach Austin. And we check in with Bruce Feldman. Joe, for as prolific as this first half has been, when I talked to Cliff Kingsbury, he said, you know what, I like how he responded. He did miss a bunch of throws early. We got to get the run game established, and we got to find a way to get a turnover some, somehow. Which they normally do, Bruce. But yeah, as far as the run game goes, just 20 yards on 19 carries in that half. J.D. and High. Back-to-back -back catches for sixth-year seniors. Rarely do you see any, let alone two in one offense. Texas Tech has six or three on their team. I mean, it, it, it's a rarity. Remember playing in Notre Dame, we had a guy apply for it, couldn't get it. Talked to J.D. and High about how hard it is to be able to apply and actually get accepted for a sixth year. Houston brings pressure and able to get home with Leroy Godfrey deflecting the arm, and it's second and ten. See, they're a free rusher for the most part. There's Godfrey getting his hand in on the football. Arm coming forward, though, so incomplete pass, not a fumble. Have to give credit to the Texas Tech offensive line. Both their starting left tackle, left guard are out. And the backups, Deaton and Hines, have done a good job. Over the middle, what a snag by High! One handed for Jadian and 23 yards. Majority of his career has been as a special teams player. He was really looking forward to stepping up into that role like Kiki QT from a year ago, that wide position they utilize at Texas Tech. From the 45, pressure coming again. Quickly to the outside for Wesley. He's got his ninth catch of the day, tackled by Myers. If you're asking where Ed Oliver is, he's not in the game right now. Second down and six. The ground they go and slipping his way free is Henry running with aggression through the defender to the 24. Austin Robinson, number 22 for Houston, had a shot, missed the tackle. He's a converted quarterback to linebacker. A ton of athleticism still developing at the position. Fake the run this time. Underneath they go. 
And that is Collins, Seth Collins, and Oliver comes back in after a quick rest. Bruce talked about Cliff Kingsbury saying need to get the run game going. Not really. <laughs> yeah. You're playing right now in the passing game. 33 of 43 now. They flip it to the edge here. Bounce into the sideline. End zone. Touchdown. It's Henry again. <laughs> and it was the perimeter blocking. I guess they do them a little bit of a run game. But once Henry gets the flip, look at all the players on the outside helping to pave the way. Wesley with a little shove, too. Dante Thompson. Tight end position. Even the runs are passes, though. That's technically a pass. <laughs> it was forward, so yeah. it was a forward pass. And because of that, it's the fifth of the day for Bowman. Texas Tech back in front. They go 87 yards in two minutes and 14 seconds. What's new? Charles Harden Buddy Holly was born here in Lubbock in 1936 and collect and preserve and promote his legacy at the Buddy Holly Center. So they have officially ruled that as a run play. It looked pretty clear that it was flipped forward. Either way, it's a touchdown. Yeah, after I said what I said about the run game, apparently they just felt the need to go in and score on the next play. Yeah. It did look like a forward pass, though. Clayton Hatfield will kick it. And we go down to Bruce. Joe, talking to Major Apple right, right before the third quarter kickoff, he told me this is exactly the kind of game that I told our guys we were going to get into. We can't afford stupid penalties. We do have to tackle better on the edges because we're letting four and five yard gains become big plays. But I said, listen, this is the same thing we've talked about all summer. If you want to be a championship team, you got to play hard and play smart and be disciplined and tough on the road. And that's exactly the kind of game we're in right now. They've won eight of their last nine against Power Five teams, and the lone loss in that span was against Texas Tech in last year's meeting. King rolled into his right, and just shy of the line of scrimmage. Tony Jones was there. And Terrence Williams at Baylor ran for almost 2,000 yards in his time there, and then had a bad injury last year, season-ending shoulder injury that ultimately led to his transfer to Houston to play again for Coach Bryant. Second and 11. Williams again foot in the ground into the arms of Preston Gordon to midfield where it'll be third and four. Neither team has been great on third down. Houston's been a little bit better because they've been in more third and manageable. Play action and incomplete out in front of Brooker. Fourth down. Interesting play design. A little misdirection but then trying to get it to to Brooker on a, what amounts to be essentially a screen. Again, said it earlier, Marquez Stevenson, when they put the ball in his hand, those drives tend to end up with putting points on the board. <laughs> Again, last drive, the benefit of a double pass there, but. So they don't get the defense much of a break. Punt team comes out. One turnover today came in this phase as Bowman muffed it and led immediately to a Houston touchdown. He won't have to attempt to catch this one. Short punt. Texas Tech with the lead in the ball after this. First down play action. Bowman setting his feet, showing off the arm once. Wesley, he's got it. First down inside the 15 and a 58 yard connection. He came all the way across the field to get this football right here. I mean, look at this. Bowman's got his eyes, he's working, he's working, waiting for him to get across. And a beautifully thrown ball in a spot where Wesley could adjust to it. That's the one thing you gotta be impressed by with Alan Bowman is on the deep balls, he's putting in a catchable spot. 
Wesley to 200 yards on 10 catches. Henry, right side, with a seam and a touchdown! Third of the day for the freshman running back. And for the first time, one of these two teams has more than a one touchdown lead. And Henry's going to be special. You watch this young man, the versatility he brings, catching and running the football. If you give him a seam, he's gone. Too much speed, too much quickness, good vision. Forty-nine, thirty-five. It was set up by Antoine Wesley from Alan Bowman. Came into the year with ten catches in his career. He's got ten today. And then the freshman Henry having a coming-out party. Forty-nine, thirty-five. Tech. Jean Henry with his third rushing touchdown today. Yeah, for the first time, one of these teams has opened up more than a touchdown lead. Clayton Hatfield to kick it. And Marquez Stevenson waits back. Using that wind to sail it out of the back of the end zone. See how Houston responds, facing a big deficit for the first time today. Put it back in the air here. King, strong arm for Bryson Smith. First down in a Texas Tech territory. It's a beautifully thrown ball, but an even better route. So that a Colorado route, they kind of sell you on the slant, roll back around almost to a comeback. The guy who's only been playing receiver for a little while. King throwing incomplete for Moba Carr. The wide receivers for Houston look gassed, and they don't have a ton of depth. I mean, really, besides Keith Corbin, Courtney Lark, Marquez Stevenson, that's about it. They don't they don't get too many guys rotating in that are to help them out. You know, Raylan Singleton caught a touchdown pass in the beginning of the game. Haven't seen him since. Had to replace so much at receiver. A lot of new faces there. Here's King up the read play. A gain of five. You know, we talked about Derek King being a receiver for much of last season. Coming into this year, King had more receptions than the rest of the receivers combined. Third and five. He'll dump it off. It's Romello Brooker with a tremendous open field tackle from Keyshawn Allen, making it fourth and short. Keyshawn Allen, one of the backups, really stepping up. Jay Sean Johnson, their leader, maybe back next week. Snap it quickly on fourth down, and they get it. Moba Carr, tackled by Brooks and Allen. We're still in the third quarter. Big hole off the right side, and Moba Carr taking advantage, setting up first and goal for Houston. Not seen a whole lot of Carr today, but on this drive, he's helping him move it down. They pump to Singleton, and it opens up Corbin for the touchdown. Houston promptly taking advantage of the three and out, and back to within a touchdown late in the third. Well, this is all about the play design and misdirection. The pump outside by King, and then you see Corbin with so much space to work with. Blows by DeMarcus Fields, and watch right there, number one, Jordan Brooks. Can't quite get a hand in on it. Number 31, Justice Parker, bit up on the swing as well. Corbin with his second touchdown catch today. King with his fifth touchdown throw. And back to a one touchdown game. And we check in with Bruce. Guys, it's pretty hot down here. Houston's on the side of the field that is now only now getting the shade. You got guys cramping up. Alex Myers, they're starting defensive back. He had an IV. Ed Oliver's been cramping up. Marquez Stevenson was just down. He was getting an IV. It's been a, it's been kind of an exhausting afternoon for these guys. They've been on the field a lot. Bruce, how are you doing, though? That's our question. Are you hanging in there? I'm fantastic, Brady. I'm built for this. <laughs> he loves these high-scoring games. Yeah. Pressure coming, throwing into it. That is Vasher. And that is a first down and a gain of 23. And this is essentially just a jump ball. I mean, it's supposed to be a back shoulder, but look at Vasher. He gets the cornerback running, puts on the brakes. 
easy pitch and catch and wise enough to keep a foot in. As we go to the fourth, fasten those seat belts. 49-42, still 15 minutes to go from Lubbock. If you like defense, burn the channel. If you like offense, you've come to the right place. 49-42. Speaking of that offensive line, though, how about the job they've done with two of their veteran starters out for much of the day and Bruffy and Akamano. Hines in, Deaton in. They're facing pressure here. That's thrown behind Wesley, but he's able to juggle and catch it. 11th catch over 200 yards for the junior Well, that's what happens when you've had a bunch of big catches You're gonna require the cornerback to play with off coverage. It gives you more of an opportunity to come back to the ball High has it for a first down, you know Antoine Wesley Brady came into this season spot duty his first two years 10 catches for 137 yards in those two years and today alone 11 catches 210 they're looking for someone to step up. Wesley's been there. Vasher needs to continue to be more consistent. But Demarcus Felton, we've not seen a ton of today. Loses a yard with Derek Parrish bringing him down. The Texas Tech sent four receivers to the NFL. Rarely is that a question around here, but like you touched on, the sure things were the O-line and the defense. The question marks were the quarterback and the receiving core. And an odd mix of inexperienced guys with, with some six-year seniors mixed in. Second down and 10. A couple minutes into this fourth quarter. Tech with a ball and a touchdown lead. Confident throw. Wesley shedding a man inside the 15. Another chunk play for the junior from Vegas. And watch Wesley come back to the football. That's what makes this play. The Houston Cougar defender flies by and is able to get Yak for the first down. Video game numbers for a bunch of guys in this game. Early on, both teams. Henry. Gets two. To John Henry, the ball carrier. Like Egg Boy ran over Zach Austin to, to make that tackle. And clearly, Henry's shaken up. So he comes out, and his fellow freshman, Sir Roderick Thompson, comes in. Second and eight, all the There's Dante Thompson coming in at the tight end position. Number 11, at the top of the formation. He's a lead blocker. That thing was blown up. Guess who again? Ekbule. And lead blocker still working on the blocking as we talked to offensive coordinator Kevin Johns about. He said, you know, we don't have a tight ends coach. So it's kind of a shared duty on our staff working with him on his blocking skills and going over the scheme and what his responsibilities are. Third and 10. Bowman retreating, throwing. It is. First down and goal as Sir Roderick Thompson has the reception. And Thompson almost lost this football as he got down towards the goal line. The chance where maybe it would have been a fumble. I'm curious to see if the Houston defender was, was going to be close. Watch as he gets spun around. Oof. <laughs> Oblong shaped ball. Get you every time. As the football gods let Thompson hang on to it. Felton comes in straight ahead. Didn't get it. Second and goal. Yeah, this is where if you're Texas Tech, you can just milk some time off the clock. In a good position here. Give your defense some rest. Continue to wear down this Houston defensive front. And you and you know you've got the ability and access to throw to the outside in a one-on-one -on -one matchup. We've seen that to Vash, we've seen it to Wesley. Now they bring Henry back in a running back, 5'7, 170 pounds. He'll be the man with a flip to the outside. He's got the corner for the touchdown. His fourth of the day, opening the lead back to two touchdowns. 
It's one on one with Derek Parrish, number 31. And once Henry gets to the outside, he's got too much speed. It's just him in the end zone. Field for the extra point and just the drive Texas Tech was looking for six and a half minutes 82 yards the deficit for Houston is again two as Tejon Henry gets his fourth touchdown today and Texas Tech exceeds 50 points Stevenson will have a shot but having signaled for a fair catch, she'll get the ball to the 25 yard line. First down, they'll throw it in an opening underneath for Stevenson. Still plenty of time in this game. 722 left to go in this quick strike Houston offense looking for one. Jordan Brooks. Well, the car hit in the backfield and dropped by Joseph Wallace. If they're gonna come back, it's on De'Ara King. And Marquez Stevenson, those two need to be the ones that are making the plays, whether it's connections in the passing game or King with the speed at times, too. The King in the second half, just 9 of 22 after an efficient first. Try King again. It's Wallace again with the tackle. Sophomore out of Dallas. Got in great shape this offseason. Off to a good start this year and playing another. Impressive game today. You got to think you're utilizing all four downs now. You're at that point in time in the game, down two scores with 6:40 left and a running clock. Third and seven. Stevenson on the sweep gets pulled down for a loss by Dakota Allen. Just not the same type of pop or explosion from Stevenson. As I said before, not a lot of depth of wide receiver. These, these Houston wide receivers seem worn down right now. And like you said, at this point, 615 and county, not really any choice. They'll go. We're gonna dig deep. Courtney Lark, Marquez Stevenson, Keith Corbin. Tech brings pressure. They get a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Dropped by Lark. Fry was in coverage. King gave him a shot, but Lark couldn't hang on, and they turn it over on downs. Freshman in. Did he bump him just before the ball got there? You know, either way, incomplete. And if you're Lark, you, you got to be able to bring that in. We'll take a break. Texas Tech in command. Texas Tech by two scores, 5.55 left to go. Alan Bowman knocking on the door, the best single game performance as far as yards for a freshman in Big 12 history. 568. Handed off to Henry. For a short game time. What's amazing about that? That was on third down coming into the game. Tua hadn't had an incompletion on third down all year. Wow. Henry gets a block and blasted from behind by Ed Oliver. And an injured player for Houston. You know, one of the key things in this game time of possession. Texas Tech has had the ball for more than 46 minutes. Houston less than 23. That's 46 minutes the Houston defense has been on the field. I think this is a pretty solid indication of what we can expect from them moving forward in the Big 12 play. Now, this is kind of a measuring stick day for them. Remember, this is a Houston team that just beat Arizona 45-18. It was 38-0, and then the backups went in. It wasn't even as close as that score would say. Henry sneaks his way through. Another first down. Well, and for Houston, you've got enough talent in the building to win the AAC. I mean, they really do. It just is going to come down to, um, you know, getting back healthy, recovering from this game, probably both physically and mentally. I think of anything, you know, figuring out different ways to utilize that Oliver. I mean, he's probably playing a little bit out of position for what he's going to be at the next level. But even now, finding more ways to allow him to impact games. Well, 
Run that play clock down, run the game clock down to four minutes. Did Texas Tech give any kind of a blueprint as far as how to approach Ed Oliver? I think you got to give credit to one their offensive line. I mean, the, the one thing that every offense is going to do is when they've got a free guy looking for help, they're typically going to look back inside to help out versus Ed Oliver. But for the most part, getting the ball in the perimeter and making sure you're taking care of getting the ball to the outside where you can't really impact that game. Take it to Henry. Bowman setting his feet over the middle. Wesley got it again. What a day for number four. His third touchdown, and what a day for Alan Bowman, who goes over 600 yards in his second career start. What's well, a little misdirection helped buy him time, and he was waiting on Wesley the entire route to get across an absolute dime. You cannot throw this ball any better. And Wesley this time comes up with it. And now a single game record for Antoine Wesley at Texas Tech, 261 yards. And for Alan Bowman, surpassing Patrick Mahomes as a freshman for passing yards. Not just Texas Tech, but across the Big 12. 43 of 59 for 605 and five scores. Three of them to the man. I think you can call Alan Bowman's favorite target, Antoine Wesley. Texas Tech has opened it up. And we check in with Bruce Feldman. Guys, Alan Bowman has been so impressive, not just on the field, but even on the sideline, how he commands everything. I, yesterday, I talked to their six-year receiver, a 24-year-old Zach Austin, who actually grew up with Baker Mayfield. That's one of his best friends. They came together as walk-ons here six years ago. And I said, does anything about him stand out in regard to Bowman? And he said, you know, I say this in the best way possible, but both he and Baker, they're both kind of smart asses, meaning they keep people loose. And he said, they're both really good when something bad may have happened they're able to completely forget about it so when you're compared to Baker Mayfield in the Big 12 that's a really good thing he hits Corbin over the middle to keep the drive going Barry King's pass complete to number two Keith Corbin stop to number 20 Adrian Fry first and ten for the Cougars his way into contact uh, six or seven Patrick Carr in the ball carrier. now we're talking about Alan Bowman Bruce telling you a little bit about his personality Cliff Kingsbury is telling us how hard he typically is on his freshman quarterbacks and he said he's done everything that he can to try and rattle Alan Bowman and just hasn't been able to Smart kid, but some moxie about him, too. And he's gotten into game situations now and still no signs of rattling. Talked to Rusty Witt, the strength coach. He said he really just kind of came in and worked his tail off to try to fit in when he enrolled early. But as time wore on, you could tell I got a lot more confidence, a little more swagger to him. So he'll be a little bit more vocal. Do we see him... Uh, Doing that to Ed Oliver saying I happened to catch I'm not sure if our cameras got about I was watching him after the last touchdown pass There was a little bit of talking going back and forth on third and two a strike to Stevenson And the first down inside the 30 it's uh, it's easy to say that now when you're not gonna have to go back out there to face Ed Oliver right well timed Yeah If you are he's gonna hand off the football King to the sideline, and that is another catch. He's on Texas Tech and looking at the road as they move forward. Starts next week in Stillwater versus Oklahoma State. It's going to be a tough road because they got West Virginia as a good team. TCU plays against Ohio State tonight. We'll kind of see what they can do there. First down for King. Not an easy road. Oklahoma State that went over a ranked Boise State team today. Pretty good day for the Big 12 in general, right? Yeah. Texas Tech today, Oklahoma winning. Kansas, Oklahoma State, as you mentioned. And then obviously the potential of both TCU and Texas tonight. TCU have any chance? I give them a chance, yeah, of course. I mean, playing a little more friendly confines than Ohio State is in that case. But you know, to me, it comes down to really what Sean Robinson can do offensively. 
And that's over Brooker's at third down. And this is going to be rough in the passer. Uh, Vontae Dorsey. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number 15. Penalty is half the distance to the goal. Automatic first down. And just a tad late. You know, obviously, Dorsey's trying to get to him. After the play action fake, he was triggered to then go after King. Just couldn't get there in time. Back to the conversation. I'd, I'd give TCU a, a chance. I just think this Ohio State team is too talented. And they may be better off with Dwayne Haskins at quarterback than what they had last year passing with JT Barrett. King going to run it in for the Houston touchdown. That's something you, you wish if you're a Houston fan you could have saw a little bit more earlier in the game. I mean, he's so dynamic running the football. But credit Texas Tech, there wasn't a ton of rushing lanes for him. And really early on in the game, there was a lot of plays to be made on the outside. And Houston was making them. They just seemed to kind of get gassed and stall out in the second half. It's back-to-back -back six touchdown games for De'Aaron King. Four through five through the air, one on the ground today. We take our last break. Back to Lubbock in 30 seconds. Setting up for the onside kick. With a minute seven to go and a two-touchdown game. Looking for that big hop if you're Houston. Dalton Witherspoon hits it hard. It's kind of an awkward bounce. They had a shot at it, but ultimately it's Texas Tech falling on it. Bryson Smith was, was there to grab it. It looked like he almost just couldn't corral it in and then hit it back into the field of play. Watch this. He's got almost both hands on it. Now Dalton Rigdon pounces on it. Just about sealed the deal. And Jay Sean Johnson coming back. That should help their defense out. Add a little more depth. Bowman will take a knee. Major Applewhite fired up about something. They're second. So 30 seconds. Second timeout. One left. Oh, but absolutely phenomenal performance from Wesley and really Alan Bowman as well. He's, he's another half of that connection. And for Texas Tech, it'll be a two and one start. They give a little love to the offensive line. Yeah, they were great. Neutralized at Oliver. Like you mentioned, without two of their experienced starters for much of the day. So now Cliff Kingsbury, he had the eight and five season to open his time at Texas Tech. By the way, the most points Houston has allowed in a game in 14 years. But Cliff had such a good start to his time at Texas Tech, that big first season, raising the bar as far as expectations. Four seasons since, only one has been a winning season. You know, last year they go six and seven. Some say, and, and Cliff even agreed, that that win on Thanksgiving weekend against Texas might have saved his job last year. Yeah, it's weird. If you look at his, his win-loss record and you kind of, you know, reverse it, and they were building up to an eight-win season, maybe a little bit different story about where they're at, but because he set that bar so high in his first year as head coach, you know, now it leads people to kind of question and wonder, where are they right now with this program? But I think this is a good sign. I mean, taking care of business, I'd say pretty handily, of a group of five team, and, and then looking towards to, to Big 12 play. I feel bad for whoever has to prepare and watching that on the film next week. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot of work. Bryson Smith shaking and baking and going down to the 49. Well, the questions coming into the year for Texas Tech. Who would it be offensively to help support? Yes, the noted strength, the defense. Who would it be a quarterback? Of course, three-man job was won during camp by McLean Carter. Goes down with the injury early against Ole Miss. Very clearly, it looks like Bowman had been taken over as the guy moving forward. And he's also found the other answers they were looking for at receiver with Wesley's big day. Vasher had a good day. He's continued to spread it around to other guys as well. And Kingsbury will keep the beard. Yeah. He's a superstitious guy. But so. ain't broke. <laughs> and that is the final play of the day.
As we expected, a lot of points in this one. Ultimately, Cliff Kingsbury's team finishes with more. 63-49, the final. Get you back to L.A. for more college football coverage after these messages. It is Texas and USC coming up tonight.